So let's look at a method that is defined as password authenticated key exchange or PAKE. Is it possible for Bob and Alice to have a secret, say a password, and then for them to derive an encryption key, say for a session, uh, based on that secret password? And if Eve doesn't know what the uh, password is, it's not possible for her to derive the encryption key which is being generated. So the method we'll look at is called Encrypted Key Exchange, or EEC. <laughs> and uh, we'll look at both the discrete logs method as it was originally defined in this paper, and then how we would convert the discrete log method into an elliptic curve method. So generally, uh, many of the methods that we use were originally defined as discrete log methods, but unfortunately we're now looking at thousands of bits long for the prime numbers used with these discrete log methods to keep them secure. So we look much more towards elliptic curve methods given as a more efficient uh, 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 implementation for a range of devices. Okay, so this is the method here. So let's say Bob and Alice have a secret. Let's say it's a password. And from that, the, uh, they both take a hash of the password and then use a key derivation function, such as bcrypt, uh, to be able to generate a shared uh, secret uh, password. They can then use this in terms of creating an encryption key which is used within inside the key exchange method. So it's a bit like the Diffie-Hellman method but we're now going to encrypt the values that are actually sent and we won't actually expose things like public keys. Okay so without uh, uh, the encryption we would normally allow uh, Alice to generate an, a random A value then we take in discrete logs g to the power of a uh, mod p and then that would be passed but within the encrypted key exchange method we encrypt that value with uh, with the symmetric key derived from uh, the hash version of the password so that might be 128 bits or 256 bits, but it's probably going to be something like AES encryption. Okay, so Alice takes the hash of the password and uses a key derivation function to be able to generate the encryption key, which is going to be used to encrypt her public key. Then uh, it goes back and uh, Bob will be able to decrypt that uh, here and then he raises that value to the power of b and overall just as the Diffie-Hellman method would define we end up with a value of g to the power of ab mod p that is going to be the uh, encrypted uh, the, the secret key they're going to use for this session now, Bob will re-encrypt this part here. With, uh, sorry, will re will encrypt his public key, g to the power of b mod p, with the encryption key that Alice used uh, to encrypt with the symmetric key. So it's this one here, because he can also generate that. But he will now take the new key that has been generated this key and only when that's created will Alice then be able to uh, 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 decrypt a challenge that he sent. So he might have a challenge of the word Bob. So he challenges uh, Alice to be able to find that key to be able to decrypt the challenge and he wants her to re-encrypt using that key that has been derived, which is g to the power of ab, uh, back so that she can be proved. 
When Alice receives this back, uh, she'll take Bob's value, just like the Diffie-Hellman method, and she'll, she, well, she'll decrypt initially Bob's public key here, uh, which is there, and then she'll raise it to the power of A, and magically she has now created the same key as, as Bob. With that key, she can now decrypt the second part, which is the challenge from Bob. So she might get back the word Bob. Now what uh, Alice does is take that challenge and add her own challenge. And then we'll encrypt the two of them together uh, to create an encrypted version with the new key K. Goes back and to make sure that it is an Eve in between and that it's Bob, Bob knows the key and then can decrypt, strips off the original Bob and finds out that the challenge that Alice has sent is Alice. He then re-encrypts with that key again, the key here with that, and then Alice will be able to tell that it was Bob that, uh, that uh, uh, is sending this back. And in this way, we have authenticated either side initially starting off with the seed of the password and not of a public key. So if we don't trust digital certificates and the PKI infrastructure, it may be better for Bob and Alice to share some sort of secret and then for them to derive the encryption key that they're going to use, which is K in this case, for uh, a session. So here is the method uh, here. So we'll just have a look here and we'll see here that uh, we're, we're hashing our value there and then creating a, an integer value. We then add a bit of salt and we'll create our key using pbkdfs2, which is a bit like bcrypt. Uh, it's used in, in Wi-Fi. Uh, but this will create a key for us based on the hashed value of the password. So the key uh, is, is here, and this will be the symmetric key which is used for uh, the initial uh, negotiation process. Only if Bob and Alice can generate that same key will they be able to decode the things that go back and forward initially. Okay, so we've created an encryption here. Uh, we'll take uh, um, the uh, cipher. So that's uh, G to the power of A mod B and Bob has G to the power of B mod P. We then encrypt that value with the key that we've generated. And then that becomes this cipher that goes over uh, here. Then after that, uh, we can then, oops. Then after that, uh, we'll, uh, Bob will receive it and then decrypt it here using the same key that uh, both Bob and Alice have agreed. Uh, gets the, the value back and then is able to uh, raise the received value to the power of B to give the key. This will be the key that both Bob and Alice will use. Again, we can go through and then we can encrypt this and so on. Okay, so we can try this out if we want, be able to look at the code. So we'll just try it with 128 bit uh, values. So here is the shared uh, password. There's the derived key that's going to be used for the symmetric encryption. This is the cipher that uh, Alice sends. Uh, uh, Bob will be able to decrypt that, generate the same uh, key. Uh, sorry, uh, decrypt that, use his B value, and then generate the new key, which is the K value that we have there. Bob sends the cipher back. Alice can decrypt it, and then uh, we see the challenges coming through uh, here. Okay, so that's the, the basic process that, that, that we have in there. We can try it out with different sizes of discrete logs. 
obviously the longer the prime number that we have, the more secure it becomes. Okay, so that's in a discrete log way, and now we need over a thousand or two thousand bits to secure our discrete log method. So it becomes more difficult for us to cope with the, this these lengths of prime numbers. So often we convert it to an elliptic curve problem, and we go from something like this towards something like this where g is the point, the base point on an elliptic curve, g, and then a is g added a times to give another point on the elliptic curve called a g. With elliptic curve methods, uh, we have a scalar multiplication of a point. We take a point and then we scale it, or we can have a point addition. We can take two points on the elliptic curve and add them together to get another point. The difficulty in elliptic curve is it's really difficult to be able to reverse back from a point to find out the points or point which created that uh, specific point. Okay, so it's basically the same, but now we move from this discrete log into an elliptic curve uh, method G is the base point and A is the scalar, the random value that we're going to be using. Okay, so again, what we do is we do derive a key from the hashed password using a key derivation function, pbkdfs2 is used here. So we take the elliptic curve point that Alice uh, defines. She generates A, a random scalar value, and then we get A key, which is a point in the elliptic curve. And then we'll encrypt that point with uh, P and use AAS encryption here. Bob then is able to decrypt it because he knows the password and can derive the same encryption key. He then multiplies or scales the value that uh, Alice sent uh, by his value B and we get ABG as the point on the elliptic curve uh, for the key that we're going to use. We could just use the X coordinate if we wanted, but that's both Bob and Alice should be able to derive that. Bob then sends back his public key, BG, encrypted with this uh, key here, and then Alice should be able to decrypt that and find the same shared key. So we now have K, and both Bob and Alice will know K. Bob will have, will have generated a challenge for Alice and then encrypted that challenge with the new K key uh, so that Alice can now decrypt and find out C1. She adds her own C2 to this and encrypts it with the new key that have been created and then uh, uh, sends that back. Once uh, Bob has decrypted, he checks C1 was correct so Alice has been able to generate that and then will generate his own, uh, sorry, and then we'll be able to see the challenge that Alice sent, C2, sends that back with the new encryption key and Alice checks. So both Alice and Bob know that they both know the secret password and could not have got to this point. And we haven't used PKI or digital certificates or public keys and so on to authenticate this key exchange. If we look at the code, we'll find it's quite simple, really, with elliptic curve. Uh, all we've got is a scalar multiply, as we have here, as a method. And uh, the scalar multiply. And this time we've got a two point. So two points will allow us to be able to match uh, uh, an elliptic curve point and will allow us to map a, a hash value, our hash value, our, sorry, our, our, our password to a point on the elliptic curve. Okay, so we can see here, uh, this is much the same. And we've got, this is our AG here, 
for our, for our points. This is the key that we're going to create uh, there. And then we'll encrypt the point with, uh, with a key and receive that. Then when Bob uh, receives uh, that value, he'll decrypt and then we can actually map that to a point on the on the elliptic curve and this will become uh, this this value uh, here okay so uh, there's the generation of the key in there and bob should be able to generate a new key based on on that one again we can look at the uh, outputs there's no different sizes for our uh, discrete logs so that we can generate our key here and we can try different keys and it should create different uh, keys that we will initially use for our symmetric key. Okay and that's basically the method there how we can create encrypted key exchange uh, using symmetric key encryption and also having our passwords as our secrets.